Good morning, my good friends from Australia and all over the world. This is another show of hemp engineering. And I do have an extraordinary pleasure having with us Mia, uh, Mrs. Mia uh, Willot. We have known each other for almost, well, three, four years. Yeah. <laughs> Support each other in good times, bad times, and especially during the COVID times. And now I learned the news that Mia will be running as a candidate for the legalized cannabis party. And all I can say to you, Mia, is welcome back. And you got no idea how proud I feel for you taking your voice, your soul, your energy to spread this need of legalizing this plan for everyone. And I know of your fight, I know of your struggle. And all I can tell you, my friend, that this heart of mine is yours. Welcome. Thank you, my friend. Yes, yes. And you know that I always talk well from my heart. Mia! I think it's time. I think it's time that we stand up and talk. I think it's time. That is the question. What, <laughs> what make you accept this journey, this challenge? Just so many voices unheard, so many people that don't even get a voice to even, no choice. So I think it's time we get this freedom of choice. I think it's time that we have a spot where we can actually do something that can make a difference for the people. Up until now, we've fought so many battles and we've been living in so many divisions. I think it's time we all come together and actually do what's right for ourselves and the planet. We look after ourselves, we can look after each other. I agree. I agree. You know that I recently came back from India and I had the opportunity to, to uh, pay a, a, a res my respect to the Ganga River. And I submerged myself in the river and the priest that was there after the, he did the ceremony of the blessing, he just looked at me and told me, you know, the secret is cheering. And I you know, it made me think and didn't say, you know, but he was so serious. And I turned to him and I said, yeah, but you can also give a smile. <laughs> 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 and we laughed like a crazy guy it's right there in the river. <laughs> and I got no idea. <laughs> Wonderful experience. And I, I don't know why, Mia, but while I was, while I was in the river submerging, I get a vision of, all this work that the legalized party is doing in, in Australia, which is a light for the whole world because uh, no, no, there is no representative on any country on earth that have done any, not even something similar to what we have done in Australia. Yes. Brian and Sophia and and Gail, and I, I can't name them all, you know, it's unlimited and the, and the support and the pot energy that is, is going to be a change. And I feel it. Mm -hmm. You can, you can feel it. There's, there's, there's a big difference when we go out and speak to the people now. A lot of people didn't even turn their heads, they'd walk straight past. You get a lot more people just looking now which is a big difference because that look leads to questions they come back often most of the time you'll see someone have a look and they'll walk away and it must just turn in people's head how hard we struggle and how scared we are to fight for what's right so we've stopped turning our heads that's a big thing that's a huge thing we've stopped looking away everybody's looking now but i must ask you because our audience wants to know what is what is your fight? I know what is your fight, but my, my passion, my my real personal passion is the voices in hospital, the ones that don't have a choice. As you know, I went to hospital one day and I didn't come home for 10 months. I know. But if I didn't have my medicine made for me and if I didn't have that knowledge from others that had helped me in those times, I wouldn't be here to share my passion and tell you my stories. They were just going to cut that part of my lung out. So it dripped to my vein and send me home. And the amount of people I'd seen in hospital with the same conditions 
40 years later, same scenarios, very sick people. I just thought if we don't have that choice in hospital right there and then, we don't have a choice at all. We have no choices. So the fact that I was lucky enough to have the knowledge and the access to it, to have it made for when I went to hospital, saved my life. But I see so many other people die. And that that just doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right within me. I feel like someone has to speak up for the ones that aren't talking. We're too scared. A lot of people are scared. They're scared they're going to lose their children. They're scared they're going to be judged by their family members. Half of the medication needed out there is psych is non-psychoactive. It's the stigma related to it and the fear of, of somebody knowing you're getting better inhibits your life because I don't get it. I just don't understand why we don't have that choice. It doesn't harm anybody. It doesn't kill anybody. We've seen such magical things happen with this plant from industrial to medicinal to recreational. There's, you look at the kids these days that are growing in and touching ice and doing all these things. If there was a safe way to be able to do these things and introduce these things to our children, starting with education in our schools, our endocannabinoid system, it's simple. It's, it's so simple. And in the university, the doctor should be aware. And yes, I, I agree with you. You just mentioned, you just said something that uh, triggered a memory from our last other talks that we have had. Uh, which is the uh, the prohibition itself? Uh, you were wondering why we don't accept the plant, or why the two politicians keep blocking this. It is very simple. My background is engineering. I, I, I can only talk as an engineer, but mathematically speaking, any politician, anyone that is supporting the uh, the prohibition. It is very, it's as simple, as simple as he, they are getting a benefit of it under the table. Mm -hmm. There is not any other explanation. They just need to keep the system the way it is because they're getting a benefit out of the system. Because if any of those um, individuals had a, uh, someone in their family with these similar conditions like millions of people are facing in this moment, they could be the first one who will be changing the law right now. Yep. Right now. Yeah. If without... it's not a personal effect, and that's the thing. So many people have personal experiences, but they have the other side of the effect of the criminal side that comes in. So they, they start the judging, the fear comes in and nobody gets represented properly. And the other thing is that, unfortunately, our politicians in Australia, oh, <laughs> unfortunately, our politicians in Australia have a colonized mentality that they need somebody to tell them what to do. So in this particular case, Americans tell our politicians, do not change the law, and they don't change the law, even though the Americans are changing the law. So, yep. So there is um, something that I wrote some time ago that is called the 100th monkey syndrome, where the monkeys are taught not to take the ban a banana and generations pass and the new monkeys never even understood why they cannot touch the banana. That is exactly what is happening with cannabis and the provision and our politicians. And that is knowing true. that you are going to be there, knowing that we have such a, passionate and smart and motivated people, I know change is around the corner. I know that. Yeah. And it is, it's, it's a quite a powerful feeling to be part of a movement that for so long we shunned, ridiculed and laughed at. It's not funny anymore, is it? No, 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 because it is affecting millions of souls in our country and millions of souls around the world. It's very- And we see our children suffering. As you know, dear friend of mine suffers dearly with children in the system and having to use cannabis. And it's a hard pill to swallow when you can see how much difference this plant can make to a child's life, an adult's life, to anybody's life. Yet we are not allowed to see this. We are not allowed to use this. So I have a TGA approved script. 
Um, I'm approved for two bottles of THC oil, a bottle of CBD oil and 90 grams of flour a month. Now for that 90 grams of flour a month, that costs me about $1,500, which I can't do as a single mum. That's it's just a ridiculous. Money. A lot of money. But, but for that 90 grams of flour that they give me, now I'm fighting, as you know, I've fought funguses, um, things like cancer and things like that. If I'm to fight something like that, I cannot turn that medicine into the product I need it as, as an extraction, as you and I both know what we do there. Yeah. And that 90 grams of flour makes me 12 grams of medicine a month. So you know I need a gram a day. So I'm getting 12 grams of medicine a month for $1,500. How am I supposed to help myself? How am I supposed to get better? How is anybody supposed to get better? No, it's too very complicated. It's not fair for the price, for the, the restrictions on how we can use our medicine, how we can consume our medicine how we can process our medicine. That should be up to the individual. I mean, and beyond the medicine itself, uh, I wish when the legalized uh, cannabis party reaches power, we also work in changing the laws for building homes, which will be building all our homes with hempcrete for a healthier um, uh, infrastructures and use plastic and substitute the <laughs> plastic and we got so much work to do. We got so much work to do. So much we work. Do. And we can just fix our soil alone. Like before we begin all of that, our soil, we've got all of our housing projects. We've got all of our government funded housing projects that we could start hemping out the world. Yes. We could start regenerating underneath their noses without them even knowing. Yep. Mia, what a great pleasure having you again. And I feel that powerful energy of you and your love and your compassion for others. And thank you, Mia. Thank you very much. And wish you the best and, and enjoy. <laughs> much love, my friend. Respect. I mean, I love you, my friend. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you.